The following program is video supplemental instruction. VSI is brought to you by the Teaching Center, UF's Learning Support Center, www.teachingcenter.ufl.edu. Carbon-3 states a cube with two centimeter sides is made of material with a bulk modulus of 4.7 times 10 to the fifth newtons per meter squared. When it is subjected to a uniform pressure of 2 times 10 to the fifth pascals, the length in centimeters of each edge is blank. So, look for the cube and it's, we have a cube and it's subjected to a uniform pressure and it's a positive value for the pressure. So, pressure is basically kind of going like this on all sides which is important later in the problem we need to realize that the pressure is actually going to cause it to get smaller because the formula is kind of a little open-ended for this. So our formula we have states our pressure must be equal to our bulk modulus times the change in volume over the original volume. Okay? And this formula is very specific. In the book it says specifically this is V is the original volume and this guy right here is the absolute value of the change in volume. So it's going to be up to you guys to assign if it's getting, basically to figure out if it's getting smaller, if it's getting bigger, and if delta V is going to be final minus initial or possibly initial minus final. So with that all in mind, let's see what they gave us. We have the bulk modulus in 4.7 times 10 to the fifth, so that's going to be this guy. We have our pressure is 2.0 times 10 to the fifth. Now, don't forget to check your units. Uh, this is in newtons per meter squared. And this is in pascals. A pascal is defined as a newton per meter squared, so we're good with that. So these units are okay. Now this one right here, I'm gonna do a little differently, just to make our lives a little bit easier. I'm gonna leave it in centimeters. I'm gonna leave everything that they have in centimeters. So our volume is actually gonna be in centimeters cubed. That's okay because the centimeters and the centimeters are going to cancel themselves out. Okay, as long as you have the same units over them, it's okay when you're dealing. This is basically just a proportions kind of equation. So, delta V over original volume, 2 cubed. If you don't feel confident doing this, or if you don't trust me, that's fine. Do it with uh, 0.02. It will give you the same answer. I just. Uh, I'm skipping the step of the conversion in this particular equation, it's safe to do. So, with that in mind, basically we're going to be left with our change in volume to be 2.0 times 10 to the 5th divided by 4.7 times 10 to the 5th times 2 cubed. Which, by the way, these units would cancel out, so we're going to left with our change in volume in centimeters cubed, just FYI. So we know our change in volume is going to be 3.404. Okay. Now, this is where you start having to use some intuition. This is our change in volume. So our original volume could have either increased or decreased by this much. Now, if we have a cube and it's, sub it's subjected to uniform pressure, they don't specifically say it, but they want you to assume that it's a pressure such as it's under water or something. It'd be kind of difficult. They would have to really pretty much tell you the pressure was on the inside. Normally, you can just assume it's on the outside. If that question came up on a test and you weren't sure, I feel like the professor would pretty much have to answer that because it is worded a little vaguely if you uh, really wanted to pry at it. But it's a good safe assumption would be the pressure's on the outside. Therefore, the cube would get smaller, okay? So if the cube's getting smaller, what we're going to do is we're going to say our, ini our, bleh, our initial volume minus our, excuse me, our initial volume minus our final volume is going to be equal to 3.404. That's our change in volume, it's getting smaller. So our initial volume minus, excuse me, minus 3.404 is going to be equal to our final volume. Okay, which is just going to be equal to 4, well, excuse me, 
simply rewrite this and plug in the initial volume. The initial volume was 2 cubed, or 8 centimeters cubed. So 8 minus 3.404 is going to be equal to 4.596, and that is going to be our final volume. Now, this is not our answer, but we're almost there. They don't want to know the final volume, they want to know the final length of the side. So all you have to do at this point is say, well, if we know final volume to the power of one-third is equal to one side, or final side, then 4.596 to the power of one-third should be our answer. And 4.596 to the power of one-third gives us 1.663 which is choice number one, 1.66. So this is the length of the sides of the cube, each side, once it is uh, subjected to this pressure, given a material with this particular bulk modulus, 4.7 times 10 to the fifth newtons per meter squared. So, deceptively tricky problem. Uh, the equation is looks very straightforward, and to be honest, the other equations in this chapter you learn for shear modulus, and you learn uh, for Young's modulus are a lot very straightforward. This one, there's a little bit of intuition with that delta V. Furthermore, this V they write as just a straight V for volume, while it is actually the initial volume, not the final volume. So just keep those in mind when and if you're using this particular formula. And that's it. 1.66. The Teaching Center, UF's Learning Support Center www.teachingcenter.ufl.edu